Jesus said, Man cannot live on bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You're listening to Daily Truth. According to natural reason, it was foolish to undergo circumcision at this time. However, when God gives a command, we must not consult with flesh and blood. According to human reason, it would have made much more sense for Israel to be circumcised before crossing the Jordan. For that matter, they had 38 years, 40 in total, but 38 years for this new generation of Israelites to be circumcised in the wilderness as they were on the way to the promised land. There were ample opportunities, in other words, for Israel to be circumcised when they were not surrounded by a threat, when they were not surrounded by their enemies. To be circumcised at this time defies human reason. Because of the natural healing process, it made all the fighting men in Israel temporarily, albeit, but temporarily vulnerable, not able to fight. For some of you, if you're familiar with your Old Testament narratives, you may be familiar of a particular time when a particular people were circumcised and they were defeated during that vulnerable moment of healing. That the sons of Jacob tricked a neighboring tribe into joining into covenant with Israel, this family, by undergoing circumcision, and then to avenge their sister, they used that moment after this neighboring tribe had just been circumcised to go and slaughter them before they were able to be healed and therefore before they were able to fight successfully. So we have a biblical example where circumcision clearly is not a practical advantage in battle. At least not for the first few days. It takes a little bit of time. So again, in a practical sense, you would think, why would you enter into enemy territory and then make yourselves vulnerable? Why not deal with that before? Or why not deal with that after? After you've defeated not only Jericho, but all the other surrounding enemy camps. Or why not deal with it for 38 years? It's not as though you didn't have time. There were 38 years, the last 38 years of the 40, while wandering in the wilderness, that circumcision was neglected. Now, on that point, it's a difficult reality of the Old Testament narrative to reconcile. Because we know that God was very particular through Abraham, that every Hebrew male should be circumcised on the eighth day. And we know that God was also particular through Moses during the time of Israel held in bondage in Egypt and for the first two years as they were led out of Egypt, there was also, again, this renewal covenant ceremony, circumcision and Passover. God was very insistent, in particular, that his people should bear the covenant signs of their covenant God and his covenant promises. And then, all of a sudden, we have an ellipsis. We have this parenthetical pause of 38 years, just about an entire generation, according to Jewish measurements of time, an entire generation where the commandment of the Hebrew males to be circumcised on the eighth day is utterly neglected. And the biblical text does not tell us anywhere in the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Old Testament, or in Joshua, it does not tell us an explicit command coming from God that they should neglect circumcision. And yet, I do believe that by way of necessary inference, this is the proper interpretive conclusion that the people of God should come to. 
we should assume that this was not merely radical neglect of obedience to God's commands, but although the command is not explicitly stated in the biblical text, we should assume that there was a command given through Moses to the people of Israel during their 40-year wandering that they were not only neglecting, but that they were actually forbidden by God through divine command to apply the covenant sign of circumcision to their children. And if God did give this command, which I believe he did, we know that God does not issue his commands and his laws arbitrarily, but that he would do so for a particular purpose. Matthew Henry, I think, is helpful at this point. He too holds to the position that Israel did not simply neglect obedience to circumcise their children during this 38 years of the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, but rather that they were prohibited and divinely explicitly forbidden from doing so by a command through Moses from the Lord himself. Matthew Henry says it like this. Had not God enjoined it to Abraham under a very severe penalty that every man-child of his seed should be circumcised on the eighth day in accordance with Genesis 17, 9 through 14? And yet, under the government of Moses himself, to have all their children that were born for 38 years together left uncircumcised is unaccountable. So great an omission could not be a general oversight, but only by divine direction. Therefore, it seems to have been a continued token of God's displeasure against them for their unbelief and murmuring. Circumcision was originally a seal of the promise of the land of Canaan. It was in the believing hope of that good land that the patriarchs circumcised their children. But when God had sworn in his wrath concerning the men who came out of Egypt that they should be consumed in the wilderness and never enter Canaan, nor come within sight of it as a further ratification of that sentence and to be a constant memorial of it to them, all that fell under that sentence and were to fall by it were forbidden to circumcise their children, by which they were plainly told that whatever others might, they should never have the benefit of that promise of which circumcision was the seal. What we find in these verses, particularly verses 4 and 5 and 6, is that they did not circumcise their Hebrew male sons because they were not permitted to enter into the land of Canaan. They being the original generation of Israelites who came out of Egypt. Let me read those verses once more so that they're fresh in our minds. This is Joshua 5, verses 4, 5, and 6. The Bible says this, And this is the reason why Joshua circumcised them, all the males of the people who came out of Egypt, all the men of war, had died in the wilderness on the way after they had come out of Egypt. Though all the people who came out had been circumcised, that first generation, yet all the people who were born on the way in the wilderness after they had come out of Egypt had not been circumcised. For the people of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness until all the nation, the men of war who came out of Egypt, perished because they did not obey. This is key. They did not obey the voice of the Lord. The Lord swore to them that he would not let them see the land that the Lord had sworn to their fathers to give to us, a land flowing with milk and honey. So why was this new second generation of Israel that was born along the way during this 40-year period of wandering in the wilderness, why were they not circumcised? Because of God's displeasure towards them? Ironically, what I want you to catch is this. It was actually because of God's displeasure with their parents. It was God's 
just wrath towards the first generation of Israel, those who had been captives and slaves in Egypt, who had come out of Egypt, it was God's displeasure with them, the parents' generation, that caused him to forbid them from applying the sign and seal of circumcision to their children. Fight by flight, why leaving godless places is loving godless places. I've had a lot of people tell me recently, Pastor Joel, you're post-millennial. You claim to believe that Jesus is king of every square inch, but apparently you don't think he's king of California because I've heard your personal story that you used to be a pastor there and that you left for the state of Texas. Notice the title, not fight or flight, but fight by flight. Think of the prodigal son. He comes to the end of his rope. He's longing to be fed with the pods given to the pigs. And the parable says no one gave him anything. No member of the father's house tracked him down to give him a handout. He was hurting. He had to lie in the bed that he had made for himself by his foolish choices. You know what the next words in that parable are? No one gave him anything and he came to his senses. He began to repent. There are 10 million professing Christians currently living in the state of California. What if they're fighting, but at the same time, while well-intentioned, they're also funding? What if California could be brought to its knees simply by the faithful not fighting there, but leaving there and forcing Gavin Newsom and other tyrants like him to actually have to take a spoonful of their own medicine? The book has been forwarded by Douglas Wilson. It's been endorsed by Michael Foster. It's good to be a man. Also Meg Basham, The Daily Wire, and Steve Dace from The Blaze Network. It's available on Amazon, as well as a cheaper copy that can be purchased right from our website, which is rightresponseministries.com. Check it out today.